everyone and welcome to the first webinar of well first coverage book webinar of 2023 um so this webinar is um all about hints and tips and sneaky things you might not know about working in coverage book um i'll just introduce us all while everyone's coming in because um it's a very popular one um this time around hello ida from germany um so while everyone's just coming in um i'll introduce ourselves i'm laura i'm head of customer success here at coverage book um this is david he's head of support over at coverage book david yeah. will be doing the nitty-gritty meaty part of of the webinar and over on keyboards as normally we as normally as normal we have will um so feel free to um use the chat function in the webinar to ask your questions as we go along um what we'll do is he'll try and answer any that he can straight away um if your question doesn't get answered straight away don't worry um we might be saving you for the end because then david could do a bit more of a demo um hi ola from belfast and lauren's um so as always we'll try and keep this within half an hour we've been timing it so i think we're well within it so we've got enough time for some q and a's afterwards um and yep it's quite a few of us in here now so i guess probably good to crack on because i know how busy everybody is so i shall pass you over to david how many tips do you reckon you can take us through in half an hour david at least six <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you've got a few sneaky ones up your sleeve. And, and you've got a surprise at the end, haven't you? I do have a surprise, yes. Uh, hot off the press from yesterday. Uh, but I can tell you all about that uh, at the end. Right, I'll let, you, I'll let you carry on now. Thanks, Laura. Um, yeah, so hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, yeah, we will be running through um, six kind of completely different uh, hints and tips, actually, from all over uh, the coverage book workflow. So hopefully you'll find these uh, super helpful and they will hopefully save you a little bit of time. So the first uh, kind of thing that we're going to look at is the Coverage Book Chrome plugin. So I'm not sure if uh, any of you have used this, uh, but there are two main features that you can get out of the Coverage Book plugin. Um, if you haven't downloaded it before, head to the uh, Google Chrome web store and you can just search for a uh, coverage book uh, and you can download the clipper um, to your Chrome bar. And once you've downloaded it, you'll see the little coverage book logo in the top right hand corner of your screen. Um, <clears throat> this has two main features. The first feature is that it allows you to quickly retake screenshots if for any reason, um, the original one that we've taken has like a cookie or a pop-up that gets in the way. So as you're looking at uh, pictures of your coverage, if for any reason this looks sort of dark and greyed out and uh, not very nice, um, if you click into there, you can hit the retake screenshot button and this will actually take you to the web page uh, where you can basically close off any pop-ups or ads or whatever. And then when you're ready, you can hit take screenshot uh, and it will take a nice clean screenshot uh, to import back into the book for you. So that's kind of like the, the first use of the clipper, but it actually has a really handy bookmarking feature as well. So um, if you tend to organically look through uh, different web pages and you're copying and pasting URLs of coverage into a list that you can use to create reports from, our clipper can help you do that. So at the moment, I have three uh, URLs already saved in my clipper. So the good thing is um, you can just add a bookmark and we will remember it for you for as long as you need. And then when you're ready to create the report, you can just quickly copy all of those links uh, and get them into coverage book. Uh, and it's super easy to use. Um, so, for example, I've got this particular uh, roundup article here that I want to add. Uh, so I can just click on the coverage book uh, clipper. I can bookmark this page. And now that I'm ready to go, I can just copy all of those links uh, to my clipboard. And then I can just create a new report and just get those straight in. So I'm gonna call this one bookmarks. 
And from here, I can just add coverage links. And I can just paste those uh, straight in. So nice and simple to use. And hopefully that will um, just be a handy additional tool uh, that you can use to kind of bookmark URLs and get them into your account. So the second tip should also help you to um, save some time when creating new reports for clients. Um, one of the things that we get asked about a lot on support is that uh, how can I keep all of the formatting in an existing book for a client uh, so that I don't have to keep adding um, and changing and editing the report every time I make a new one. So if you do tend to make either weekly or monthly or just regular reports for the same client and they like to have um, the same logo, the same formatting. So, for example, in our uh, regular feature here, the live promo book on our webinars, um, I have a set background color for my front cover. I've got our coverage book logo here. Uh, and I've also um, manually edited the metrics in the right order that I want to show them. So everything's ready to go. Um, it even um, I've even got some backlinks in here as well to search for coveragebook.com. And we have lots of different sections of coverage that, that I've already added. So if uh, you want to just make a template of this report, it's super quick and easy to do. Just click on the three dots below and to the right of the book and hit on the copy option. Uh, so from here, you can copy either the, um, the entire report with all of the clippings, or you can just um, click on copy as template add that to one of your client's collections folders. And what this will do is it will just create a, a blank template of that report that you can use time and time again. Uh, and as I say, it will pull through everything for you. So the logos, the background colors, any backlinks that you've got set, pretty much all of the book settings. Um, so all of the metrics and customs cards uh, and also all of the sections of coverage that you've added. So it's a really good way of just reproducing a report time and time again without having the hassle of uh, adding all the logos and stuff. So hopefully that will help you save uh, a good bit of time there as well. So on to tip number three. Um, this one's actually uh, one, of, one of Laura's tips that I've borrowed, uh, and it's a really good one. So um, if you tend to... Uh, pick out your best pieces of coverage by perhaps highest uh, views or highest engagements or audiences. Um, there's a quick and easy way that you can do that in coverage book. Uh, and I'll go through that now. So with this particular book, the online coverage section, I've already got this sorted automatically by published date because that's how I like to present this report to my clients. Um, but I actually want to find... Um, I actually want to find uh, the best performing pieces in terms of social engagements. So because I want to include those as highlights. So what I can do is if I just click on sort coverage by just uncheck automatically maintain this order and then just resort this book by engagements largest first. So what I can now do is I can actually check um, the top three performing articles, which I've actually already got highlighted here. Um, so this is a really good way of finding kind of the top performing pieces quickly in a section of coverage, rather than having to kind of scroll through it all to, you know, to find each one that you want manually. And then once you have your selection and you've highlighted these clippings, uh, you can actually just go back in and then resort your book by published on and save that automatic order for you. So that so that will resort it for pre presenting, uh, but it should just save you time when you're trying to quickly find the best performing pieces of coverage. Uh, and now when we go to the highlights reel, those pieces of coverage will also be added there as well. So that's a really nice feature. One other thing to remember with that as well, um, when you download a copy of the CSV, so if you if you wanted to get just the raw data out into a spreadsheet format, if you go to the share book menu on the bottom left hand corner, when you download a CSV of the report, it will download the clips in the order that the book is currently sorted in. Um, so again, this is quite a handy tip if you um, if you wanted to get all of your clippings 
in a spreadsheet format sorted by, say, highest audiences. You could sort the coverage first like that, download the CSV uh, to get that sorted already, and then you can go back and resort the book however you want. So it might just save you a bit of time in having to reorder the columns manually in the CSV if you wanted to do that. So we're on to tip number four already. Wow, we're racing through these. Uh, the next one is um, it's how you can include more context and potentially additional reports inside your coverage book uh, report. So we quite often um, see on support that uh, customers will create a coverage book report with all of their clippings inside. They'll share that with their clients but they may also have some third party reports as well. Um, perhaps like a, an image of social impact with some influencer images and numbers and things like that, or perhaps um, some slides around campaign activity or um, you know, different types of events that you've run alongside your traditional campaign. Um, you can actually include these as custom slides all in the same report. So it might just save your emailing uh, inbox a little bit rather than having to send kind of three reports separately you can send them all at once and in this February report um, I've already created a, a brand new section for campaign analysis but I mean you can call this whatever you like uh, it's super easy to create a new section uh, you just click on the plus add button in the top left hand corner and you can just add a section to your report um, you can add a blank section and then just add slides to it. So you don't have to have coverage inside that section. Uh, but also if you prefer, you can also uh, add slides to the beginning of any section of coverage as well. Just click on the custom slides option and you can import those. Uh, so for example, with this particular book, I'm just gonna add in uh, an example chart image you can add as many uh, custom slides as you like. Uh, you can also reorder them and delete them by dragging and dropping them around. And it is also possible to give them a title as well. And um, I've left these intentionally blank because these example slides already have a title in those. Um, so yeah, you can upload these as a, a PDF or as a PNG or a JPEG, for example. Um, so just just grab a slide from something like uh, your G Suite account or um, PowerPoint or something, and you can upload that directly to your report. Uh, the really cool thing about this is when you share the report with others, as they're scrolling through the front pages, uh, just, past the just past the highlight section, you'll get to this campaign analysis section. So if I open up this, uh, it will contain these full page slides. So it's a really good way of uh, showcasing um, other aspects of your campaign and reports, all inside the one shareable link. So tip number five is all about refreshing data. Um, some of you may already do this, but when you import coverage uh, to a book, uh, we will collect both the audiences and engagements. So for example, we'll pull through um, numbers that measure the outlet's performance, but we will also pull through uh, social engagements and our own estimated views as well. Uh, this also has a link back to coveragebook.com. Um, when I imported this article originally, it had seven uh, Twitter shares and six Facebook shares, uh, zero Pinterest shares. Um, at any point, you can refresh this data to get the latest share numbers available. So it's a really good idea to think about refreshing the data in your report before you share it uh, or finalize it with your clients. Um, and to do that, if you go to the book overview page, just go to the metrics and backlinks button and you can click on refresh data. Uh, so this will collect the latest data that we have available uh, and you can do it once every 24 hours. Um, and that's purely just because the data comes to us from our providers uh, once a day. So, um, so yeah, you can refresh the data once every day. Um, it can take a little bit of time. So if you're about to share the report with a client, uh, do make sure to hit the start refresh button, perhaps the morning of or something like that. Um, 
it's no problem if you haven't hit refresh uh, and you've already shared the online link with the client because you can just refresh this button and as soon as the client clicks on the the shareable link to the report uh so as soon as they preview the book uh by that link they will see uh the most up to date numbers available so it's a really good way of keeping uh your your engagement numbers uh completely up to date throughout the report the final uh kind of thing to mention today uh which is a which is a really good uh, addition is front cover templates so traditionally with coverage book we've always had um just the one default montage image. So whenever you import um, both online and social coverage, we will pull together a random selection of images from the coverage in your report. But we quite often had suggestion and feedback from customers that they'd like to be able to customize the montage a little bit more, uh, because sometimes you might get a particular clipping that shows on the front cover that you wouldn't normally want to share with clients um, as, as being one of the things to highlight on your front page. Um, so the first thing that we did was that we made some uh, brand new designs for the front covers. So if you click into the front cover menu and go to the layout section, uh, the first option on the left is the stacked uh, montage, which I have here. But you can also choose from side by side which uh, predictably does exactly what it says on the tin. So you get the, uh, the title on the, on the left, coverage on the right. And you can also choose from our overlay, which is kind of like a, a nice dark mode image of the coverage as well. Um, if you prefer to keep things super traditional, we do also have the legacy layout that is still available. So this is kind of the older version of coverage book that we, uh, that we had before. I'm just going to switch that back to the stacked layout because I like that. Um, if you go over to the cover image menu here, this will also allow you to make further edits. So you can include a full page custom image for your front cover if you prefer. But actually, underneath, this is where you can now choose uh, which clippings from the report are used within that front cover montage. So there's a lot more customization available. Let me just zoom in. So, for example, you can you can leave it with a random selection. You can have the first items in your book only. Um, you can potentially have uh, items just in one section of your report as well. So if you're just interested in perhaps showcasing social images, you can totally do that. Uh, and the other thing that you can do as well is highlights. So I quite like this one because um, you can basically pick out images of the key pieces of coverage that you've already starred in your report. Uh, so yeah, super quick and easy to kind of customize this front cover montage uh, to include the images that you want to show. Um, the other thing that you can do as well is if you do choose to use these highlighted images for the front cover montage, uh, you could potentially consider just hiding uh, the highlights page as well, just to keep the report a little bit more concise. Um, so that's another thing that you could do as well, rather than show kind of the key pieces twice in your report. Uh, but if you prefer to leave that on so it's like an interactive page, you totally can do that as well. So I mentioned there was also a surprise. Um, so we've, we generally tend to keep this demo to around 20 minutes with, with questions. So I'm just about at the end now. Um, but the final thing that I wanted to mention to you is that yesterday we released support for a new social platform. So Coverage Book already collects audiences and engagements for uh, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, and we have now added support for Spotify playlists. So uh, this went live yesterday uh, and, and it's, it's super cool. So if you, uh, let me just preview this in, in the book. Here we go. So if you upload a Spotify playlist URL, we'll embed an image of the playlist into your book. Uh, you can even scroll through uh, the list of tracks and so on uh, when you share the report. But we will also pull through the number of followers that the playlist has and will also include the number of engagements. So this will be the total number of likes that the playlist had had, has had so far. And it will also include how many times it's been shared on Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. 
So for example, if I go back to editing the book uh, and I just click into this, you can see that this particular uh, post has had around seven and three quarter million likes uh, and around a thousand and five hundred and fifty Facebook and Twitter shares. So that's really cool. So we're, we're, we're now able to pull data back for Spotify playlists. Um, if you head to the metrics summary as well uh, and click here, you can actually choose to show the Spotify um, audiences and followers uh, as its own metrics card as well. So much like all of the uh, metrics in our reports, um, there are lots of different ways that you can showcase the numbers with individual cards. I've already got Spotify likes turned on and in the audiences as well, I've already got Spotify followers switched on as a card as well. And you'll see those at the bottom of the screen. Um, at the moment, it's not possible to, um, to actually get data back from individual tracks or things like albums or, or, or stuff like that. It's just purely on playlists because of the way that uh, Spotify um, basically collects the engagements for things like the followers of that particular list and also the likes as well. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd sneak that one in as a, as a little uh, addition. And yeah, hopefully we can add support for more platforms in the future as well. Thank you, David. When I send the recording through, I know there was um, a question earlier on of um, will you send the recording and summary of slides. So anyone that signed up to this webinar, I'll send the recording through. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look through the um, any questions that uh, Will hasn't already answered. There's one that's got me stumped, David. Are you are you ready? Oh, I, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Dan has said, we recently started using HTML web ads for our clients. Is there a way to show HTML clips on a loop the same way GIFs display? If not, do you know a workaround? Could he make it into a GIF? Yeah, potentially. So you can import GIFs and they will uh, be playable in the shareable report. So they'll work the same as like an embedded static image. Um, I don't know the answer to that, Dan, but it would be good to kind of unpick it a little bit with you. Would you mind um, getting in touch with us at support at coveragebook.com and perhaps just dropping us uh, an example uh, yeah. that we can have a look at? And uh, if I can't work it out or don't have the answer for you, I can ask one of our um, ingenious developers to to help me out with that. And hopefully we can get back to you uh, with an answer. So sorry, I can't answer you right now. But uh, yeah, as Laura said, I think probably just having that as a GIF image uh, that scrolls through will work. Um, but yeah, do get in touch. Love to hear more about that. Brilliant. Oh, that one stumped me. I was like, oh, I'm not sure about that one. Um, and uh, questions about uh, Spotify, um, whether it worked for podcasts, um, and can you see how many listens they've had? Yeah, both good questions. So at the moment, it will purely be metrics for playlist URLs only. Um, specifically with something like listens, um, it's really difficult to get that data back out from Spotify. They don't necessarily make that kind of visible to um, to to get as a, as a number in itself. And also with some of these major playlists, I mean, that one had like seven and three quarter million likes. I imagine it gets a lot of listens. So to try and accurately track the number of listens that individual tracks have had in such quick succession would be very difficult to do. But what we can do right now is show follow accounts and uh, the number of people that, um, that have liked that playlist as kind of the two major the two major metrics that we can collect for audiences and engagements. Um, it might be that we can look at developing that a little bit further, depending on um, how that, that particular content is formatted. Uh, but for now, it will purely just be metrics for playlists. Um, you can add in something like um, uh, listens potentially as a, as a manual number, as a custom metric, if you do have that data available. But but I guess that that would just be an ever changing number, depending on, on the popularity of the of the track, the artist, etc. Perfect. And I think um, unless anyone's got any more questions, the um, last one is from Ben um, about adding Instagram stories. I can see Will's replied to Lauren about Insta. Oh, there's a few more. 
or in about Instagram stories. Um, do you want to mention that as well, David? Or shall I? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, <laughs> Instagram stories are probably one of the most popular things that we get asked about and support for sure. Um, in general, for a regular Instagram post and for Reels content, we should be able to, uh, to, to automate the collection of that clip into the book so that it looks right for you. But with stories, it's the it's kind of the age old problem that Instagram make those temporary. Uh, they don't format them in a way that's that's automatically collectible right now. So it won't just be coverage book that kind of struggles with this. Uh, it will be, you know, a, any any other platform it's just the way that they work um okay so interesting that st storysaver.net won't work i mean again it could just be depending on the settings of the particular influencer like um you know they might have embeds switched off there might be some kind of privacy things that are stopping uh those downloads those downloads from working um probably the best thing to do is to get in touch with us at support at coveragebook.com if you've got any questions about kind of individual things like that and we can we can have a look and try and help out where we can uh but essentially yeah big problem uh for us because instagram just don't make that content available uh to automatically upload so you would need to either do that manually as a video file or perhaps as a series of static images uh, and then and then basically add in your kind of um, outlet data, your followers and your engagements and stuff like that yourself for now. Um, if that does change in future, we would love uh, to be able to um, to incorporate stories for sure. We would. We yeah. would. Um, Diane says, can I update metrics on multiple books simultaneously and do other book work while the metrics are updating? Oh, Will's answering. Thanks, oh. Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. And um, the only thing I would say is like, uh, it will really depend on the speed of your network connection, how large the book is and things like that. So yeah, you can you can totally refresh multiple books all at once. That's fine. But it could take a while. Um, if you do have an especially large book as well, um, it might just be kinder on your browser and, and our database <laughs> if you refresh kind of one at a time, if it's, if it's a super big book. Uh, but otherwise, you should be fine. Um, and I think we've got time for one more. Um, just to confirm, the links are self-refreshing, right? I mean, if I send a link to my book, it will have the most updated engagements, etc. Even if I made the book a while ago. Um, so the the share the share URL to the book is a live up to the minute link. Um, so, for example, if I share this URL with my clients. Um, that will give them live up to the minute access to the current version of the report in your account. But uh, at the yep. moment, things like metrics don't update automatically. Um, so what you would need to do is just remember to refresh the data in your report if you wanted to update things like the social engagements. Um, so that's a manual refresh that you would need to do yourself. Um, otherwise, when you import coverage, we will collect the audiences and engagements approximately the time that you've imported the clip into your account so if they share a link with their client and then update add more coverage to the book that would still be the same that would still be the correct link to use because it's a link to that that book yeah absolutely so the share, the share link to the book will just open this this report for the client but if you did want to update the numbers uh, to the latest numbers available, just come to the book overview page and click on there. And then if you go to the right, uh, you've got the metri metrics and backlinks button. And then from here, uh, you can basically click to update and refresh. Sorry, my screen's going all over the place to update and refresh the data. And you can do this once every 24 hours. So basically just hit hit refresh. And that's it. You'll see that that's refreshing now and you can go away and leave that to do it in the background. And the numbers will start to automatically update in your report for you. Um, and it can take up to an hour, depending on how big the book is. Um, thank you, David. Um, we're going slightly over. I keep saying we'll have one more. Oh, that's OK. Will, Will's on it. Um, Francesca, I'm, I'm going to go to you as well. Is there a way to collect in one general coverage book? the coverage book was collated monthly. So how do you merge all the books together? What would be the best way to do it? 
Oh, okay. Yeah, um, we have actually covered that in our previous webinar in December uh, to help people out with year-end reporting. So do check out the webinars uh, link on our help and resources on coverage book and go to the webinars section. Uh, the last one we did actually was how to make year-end reports and summaries. Uh, it's a good one. Um, but uh, to cover this in like really quick time, if you click on the Coverage Vault page uh, link in the top left hand corner, you can um, basically go and find a book. You can select all of the coverage from that book and then you can either create a new book or add that selected coverage to an existing book in your account. So if you have monthly books running from January to December, for example, you can just add each book in turn uh, to a summary report. Um, you can separate those out by section if you want, and it will combine all of those books together into one summary, and it will total up all of the metrics as well. Um, you can reuse existing coverage as much as you like in your account. It won't count towards your usage, and um, it will leave your original books uh, alone as well. So you'll still have your monthly books, but you can just basically combine them together to make a summary. Um, Hopefully we'll sent through. Yeah, cool. We'll sent through the FAQ as well. So um, again, do get in touch with us if you have any questions on how to do that. We'd be happy to help. Brilliant. Well, a lot of questions there. Um, well done for getting through them all, David. Um, I hope everyone found that useful. I will um, send anybody who's registered for the um, webinar a link to this webinar so you can rewatch it if you'd like um and we will be doing these i think we're doing them fortnightly before but we're going to move to monthly now um ben says thanks heaps brilliant i hope we've i hope it was useful um and we'll see you all again soon hopefully <laughs> see you all again soon thanks a lot bye, bye.